hands on their back. My heart is full, and I pray that your heart is full this morning. Let's stand up for a moment. I'm going to read a verse from the Bible. Today, and um, Pastor Ishmael mentioned it last week, but today is a special day in our church calendar. It was 50 days ago that Jesus rose from the dead. And 50 days after, 40 days after he rose from the dead, he went to heaven and he said to his disciples, you wait in Jerusalem because I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And that was 10, 10, 40 days after Easter. For 10 days they were praying together in Jerusalem. These simple fishermen, scared, heartbroken. And it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, like we are here. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The birth of the church, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of believers, we wouldn't be able to, to walk this walk. We wouldn't be able to be the church. God gave us His Holy Spirit. We don't need to fight our battles in our own strength. We have the Holy Spirit, God Himself, in us. And this morning, I just want you to, uh, to ask you to open your heart for the Holy Spirit. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, ask Him now. Lord, fill me. If, if it was a long time ago and you think you ran out of the oil of the Holy Spirit, ask Him this morning, Lord, fill me again. Fill me again because I cannot do this on my own. I cannot fight my battles on my own. I cannot do these things on my own. I need your Holy Spirit. And it's by His Holy Spirit that we will worship this morning and we'll give glory to God. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have not left us as orphans in this world, but you've given your comfort, your advice to live inside of us and to fill us and to empower us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. And this morning, we thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the Spirit. We thank you for what you did 2,000 years ago, and yet today, we're still here. The church is alive. It's not dead. It is alive, and it's filled with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And as we come this morning, Lord, wash us clean from everything this world has put on us, Lord. Set us free from the chains that have held us back. Lord, forgive our sins. Lord, and open the way for your Holy Spirit to move. Oh! 
see you all this morning. Some of you I have seen last week. Some of you are here for the first time. You're most welcome. And some of you are just coming back from this lockdown time. And it's been crazy. Absolutely crazy. But look, all that craziness is out of the door Amen. for one reason. If you hear what we heard this morning here in worship, is this something special? Is it that you can just sing? Whatever you've been lacking, it's like it's just being filled here as we sing Amen. and as we get together, when we love one another, when we just come and, and spend this time together. And do you know what? Do you take it for granted? Would you ever take this for granted? Do you stop believing now that Lord, the Lord has never meant the church to be taken for granted? And today is the anniversary of the church. Today we celebrate that Jesus himself said, way before Pentecost, he was with his disciples at some point and he said, look, I will build my church. My church. He said, on this rock, that's himself, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades or the gates of hell will not prevail against him. So let me tell you this, there ain't no corona, there ain't no whatever comes against the church of Jesus Christ that can stand it. You know, in those very days, as we're going to figure out a little bit, I'm going to try to bring actually a very long and big story, and it's compressed in a few minutes. But as I read it, I get so excited because there's so much good news. There's so many things happening when people walk in the right way with God, when people thirst after God, when people forsake their old lives, and they, even as a Christian, we need to leave things behind us. Whatever life has brought you, there's a time for you to avail of the power of the Holy Spirit. Not for yourself, but to get others into this wonderful kingdom. Amen. Because the church has never been about you and about me just having a good time. It's about you being empowered in this place like you did. And as you step out, you're able to reach others. Because there's a world outside there that needs Jesus Christ so much. As much as I need it, but you know, I found it. And it's not always easy, but that's what we're going to talk about. The Holy Spirit that is in us, with us, around us, guides us, helps us. And if you didn't know that tonight, this morning, I want to tell you about it. I'm so excited. You know, I want to put a little picture on. Is that picture there? Last week I preached. Before I go into preaching, I want to just speak a word of prayer. And the Lord will help me to talk to you. Lord Jesus, I pray this morning, Lord, that Father, you will anoint me, Lord. Father, that you will speak to me, Lord. And that my brothers and sisters will not just feel different than me, but they will feel, Father, blessed and anointed, Lord. They feel filled, Lord, and challenged, Lord. They will find a way, Father, deeper way with you this morning, Lord. As they walk out, Lord, they will be taken by your hand. And Lord, you will guide them as you guide each one of us every day, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will be stirred in the spirit, Lord, to seek you more, Lord. To find you more, Lord. To love you more. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, let me just tell you this. Uh, last week, I, showed, I preached about those two guys there. Now, just, just complimentary, because it was a bit of a transition from last week into this week. The subject was about the same. But look, I told about the wheat, the wheat, the parable of the wheat, of the wheat and the weeds. Yeah? Now, they look very similar, don't they? So this one here is wheat, and that's darno. Now, if you don't know the difference, if you would just quick look at it, you wouldn't know the difference. Now the difference, however, is there's something inside those, those little clusters there. There's something to give. There's something productive. There's something that feeds. It's something that you eat every day, you and I. And the other side, if you would squeeze it, it's only nothing. And last week we were talking about forgetting what's outside this world, forgetting what about concerns you. For forgetting what represents your kingdom, the kingdom that you want for yourself, the ideal world, by just uh, following the words of Jesus Christ, telling you that he was sending the Holy Spirit. He wants to take the attention of the disciples of this one here to that one. In other words, he wanted to change something in their lives, yet they didn't grasp it yet. But if you, if you read further, we know that 
There's something that needs to happen in our spirit to become that side. We were all like that. And sometimes, unfortunately, we come to the house of God and we look like a Dharna. And sometimes we are at risk because it says, last week I was telling you, the, the left one was planted by the Son of Man and the, left, and the right one here was planted by the enemy. And it's possible the enemy puts seeds in our hearts and we could become lookalikers, but not the real thing, you know? And so that's why we need an indwelling Holy Spirit. That's why we need the constant filling of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need what we celebrate today. I will just tell you quickly what the difference is because uh, there, is, there is this thing called the Holy Spirit. Do you know? And yes, when you're saved, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. When you're saved, the Bible tells us that He is the one who convicts you. He is the one who stirs your heart to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But there's a stage in our life that He wants us to move on. You're not here. I'm not here to come and take a seat and enjoy the Christian ride. And just to be there, maybe unproductive, to be there in the position that maybe you feel comfortable with. But the Lord didn't want us to be comfortable. He has good works for you and I to do. He has challenges for us. He has also difficulties that He will bring us to. If you, I just want to remind you, when Jesus Christ was baptized into water, and when He came out, the Holy Spirit came on Him. And I want to remind you, straight after that, the story tells us that He was brought into the desert to be tempted, to go through every possible temptation that you and I would face in life. But the difference is, he was able, because first of all, he knew the word of God. He knew the words that he was going to impart you and I with. And second to that, he had the Holy Spirit. So how vital is it that just by, beside being the church, that we are constantly being filled with the Spirit of God. It puts God's plan all along. I'm going to just quickly read for you a little part of scripture and you don't have to open if you want to open it, it's actually in, in Deuteronomy 16 verse 9 to 12 and it says here count off seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain in other words to that then celebrate the festival of weeks to the Lord your God by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings the Lord God has given you. And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place He will choose as His as his dwelling for His name. You, your sons, your daughters, your male, your female servants, the Levites in your towns, and the foreigners, and the fatherless, and the widows living among you. In other words, everyone. No. I want to bring it to your attention that this book of Deuteronomy technically was put together, came through Moses. And if you think that was probably 1300 years before Jesus Christ, that he received those words and that he was saying that, you know, those festivals are important. There's three major festivals in, in, in the Jewish belief and we, we took that as, as, as Christians as well. And those were three big festivals. One of them was the Festival of Weeks. And those three festivals, they required people to go to Jerusalem. They required people to make the trip and to get together. So on any of them three occasions, you would have found pa the, 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 pa the Passover, the Feast of Weeks, and then the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, imagine it wasn't just a bunch of people like us. You know, we thought hundreds of thousands of people coming and participating in this feast and this was the feast of, of, of weeks in other words 50 days after Passover now Passover for the Jewish people were celebrating that they left the land of Egypt and now they had this time of a harvest and it says that each one of them would have to uh, uh, give or, or, or an offering of free will according to the blessings they have received now can I ask you, how have you been blessed? How have you been blessed? 
Do you give to the Lord in proportion that He that you have been blessed? Or do you just take it for granted? Do you just come in and say, look, it's great, I got something. Stick it in your pocket. But you never give it away. And this proportion, so will you give away to proportion what the Lord has blessed you? How do you think the world will look today? And the other part that struck me, this little part was here. It says He says, look, and, and rejoice, we will rejoice before the Lord, the Lord your God, at the place He will choose as a dwelling for His name. Now in those days, they would go to the temple. That was a temple that represented the house of God. But now we come to a place we know better. Jesus himself said that our body is a temple. And isn't it wonderful that he came to dwell in us as the Holy Spirit does. And now we have fellowship with him. Now this part has to be clean from the inside and from the outside. He, will, he chose this place to be a dwelling. And we celebrate that when we come together, and this dwelling place that we have inside of us together go form the core, the body of Christ, which is the church. Now we go further in this because you see how far back that Jesus, that God was planning to have this church. A little bit before uh, then, uh, probably six or seven hundred years before, maybe a little bit less, the prophet Joel spoke exactly the same words. And it's well known because it's repeated again in the book of Acts. It says here, it says here, written a few hundred years later, and afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will pro prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions, and even in, on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And those days came to pass in the book of Acts, 2,000 years ago. And I want to tell you just a similarity here, that it wasn't limited. Because if you also know from the Old Testament, there were times that the Spirit of God would fall on some people, some men, and they would do miracles. They would fight some battles that were impossible uh, to, to be fought with one person. Think about Samson who killed was it 10,000 or 1,000? Think about Gideon. Think about Saul prophesying. And that was one time experience. But the Lord said, the day I build a church, I know I want this to happen in every believer. And I want not this to happen in every believer so that they will be a great church. I want this to happen in every believer so that they will start giving according to the blessings they have received. And for that, I can't. How often do I forget about those things? How often am I selfish? How often I lack strength? How often am I touched by sin and I feel that I'm not worthy to be sharing according to what the Lord has given to me? And I guess that this is probably the biggest impediment for each one of us to avail of, what, of this gift and we restrain what the Lord wants us to share with the world. We are restrained uh, to, to share what the world needs because we feel inadequate. And that's why the Lord says, go to that place and wait on me. We all know the story. Go to Jerusalem. He was trying, I spoke about it last week. He was trying to tell them, forget about what you're going to eat or to drink. or But look, become just like the kingdom is inside of you. You need to go to Jerusalem and wait. And we all know the story there. It says in the, in the book of Acts, I'm going to read it quickly. It says there, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Remember, they had to go to Jerusalem to, for this feast of weeks, 50 days after the Passover. And now in this time, the Passover became the Lamb himself, Jesus Christ. And he paid for your sin and for my sin. He took away our sins. He rose again. He appeared to disciples. He appeared to another 500 people in the spirit of 40 days. And on the last 10 days, probably he's going up to heaven and he commands his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait. They weren't just passively waiting. They were praying. 
In other words, they were giving their hearts. And just going back to the book of Joel there. See, the book of Joel was saying, I will pour out my spirit, etc., etc. But it was afterwards, there's a key word. Because it was afterwards. They were going through a terrible time. There was a famine in the land because they sinned and the Lord allowed locusts to come in. And they devoured their harvest. They were hungry. But then and he, they were calling, the Lord said to the prophet of, of of, of Joel and he said look there's something that I want you to do I want you to render your hearts I want you to render your hearts so if you render your hearts I once more will come and that day will come that I will pour out my spirit and if you seek me I you have grounds to find my Holy Spirit if you seek me earnestly you have a way to find me and to do those things that you so not can do in your own in your own, in your own ways because a rendered heart deals with sin. A rendered heart deals with a, a lack of confidence. A rendered heart deals with everything that withholds the Holy Spirit from flowing through our vessels. And he says, go to Jerusalem. And it says, suddenly, the sound of a blowing a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire, and that separated and came to rest on them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as they enabled them. I tell you this, if you go back in the Bible, there's a story in the book of Genesis chapter 11, and that straight I don't know how many years, but it was a good time. The world was flooded. You know the story of Noah. And the survivors then, they multiplied. And the Lord told them, actually, I wanted to spread around the world, what was the known world then, and to procreate. In other words, walk with me. And to, so there was a command of God. But they found a plane on the east side of the garden, a beautiful big plane, and they started living there. Instead of following the command the Lord gave them. And they felt great about themselves. And what they did, they said, let's just build a tower that reaches into the heaven. Let's build this tower. Let's make a name for ourselves. Let's ascend, let's, let's ascend to the heavens. In other words, let's try to be God. And if you read the materials that they used, they, were, they managed to produce not only a clay brick, but it was a very hard brick, sort of a tarmac that this tower would stand forever. And you know what happened that day? The Lord said, had to come down and to look what they were doing. The Lord was not pleased. And you know what the Lord did? Gave them a, everyone there got a different language. And that was more a punishment than a blessing. In other words, they could not communicate to finish to build that tower of pride. The tower that was reaching to the heavens for men to make a name for themselves. And you know what happened on the day of Pentecost? I believe the Lord has reverted that curse. He said this time instead of punishing them with a language, I will bless them with a language. In other words, he could have reverted that curse or that punishment. And you know, I guess that those people that upper room, they realized that they were rendering their hearts. And they were praising the Lord in accordance with the blessing they have received. And suddenly they are celebrating the first fruits. The Feast of Weeks was supposed to be the Feast of Harvest, where people will bless the Lord for what they have received for the harvest. And even that. So there was time sometimes to take out the weeds. When they were fully grown, they would separate them. And it says this storm. The language that they received separated them, and each one of them spoke a different language. So, in those days, because I said it was a festival, thousands and thousands of Jews, in the meantime, they all had their own language because they lived in different places. It says, now they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound of a crowd that came together in, in, in bewilderment, because each of them heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, are those who are speaking Galileans? Then, 
how is that each of us hear yeah, them in our own native language? Now, there's a list of people there. You can read it for yourself. In chapter 2, it's a lot of places. So I might pronounce them wrong. That's why I, I, I want. But it says here, Amazed and perplexed, they ask to another, Who, what does this mean? What does that mean? The Lord was restoring something in the heart of man that he had stopped for a while. You know, when your pride, when your lack, if you're happy with yourself, you need to start asking yourself because the Lord doesn't stop. You know, last year we celebrated here at uh, uh, the baptism of some young men and women. Do you know what? That was the baptism of water. If you read to the scriptures, people think, what's the difference between baptism of water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you this. The baptism of water deals with your past, with your sin, with the life that you lived. And you, you profess that here. We cried about it. We laughed about it because we shut the door to that. And then you come and sit in the church. Do you think that that was going to be enough? No. The Lord said, I'm going to put the Holy Spirit because I dealt with your past and I'm going to empower you for the future. Amen. So if you feel that you can't do certain things because you are not ad adequate or, or you feel inadequate, look, start rendering your heart. They were in that upper room. They were praying. They were fasting. There's 120 of them there. And I mean, when that came, it was a sound that nobody could explain. But it was like thunder. The ground shook. And it's like a river that could not be contained. There's so many teachings about the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to go into those details. But it was necessary. You already said it, Pastor. And Brother Randall said it already. They were out in the book of John. And the Lord said, it's necessary that I go. So I can send the one, the Holy Spirit, that Christ will live in you. Can you imagine? The disciples up to them, they lived beside Jesus. And they've seen everything what Jesus did. And occasionally the Lord would send them out and they would do some of the things Jesus did. But now, Jesus is going away. Who is going to tell us what to do? There's nobody to do those miracles. There's nobody to speak to somebody in need. There's nobody to heal the sick. Because actually, it's Jesus doing it. And we are watching right now. Wouldn't it be great to be like that? But Jesus himself said, I'm going to go. And what about you doing those things? And what about you bringing according to what I've given you? What about you speaking out the blessings of the people's life according to what I have given you? I want to challenge you. The Christian walk is not Sunday morning. It's not Wednesday night. Listen, if you could say, when I said it to you last week, if you knew that you had 20 days to live or a month, what would you do? Because if you know that you're a Christian, do you feel guilty? Maybe because you did not give according to what you've received? Would you go and run to the town and try to convert everybody? Try to make it up with God? That is the work of the flesh. The Lord said, if you render your heart, if you go into your room and you ask, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Look, the Holy Spirit already lives in you because you're a Christian. But there is a power available of the Holy Spirit that needs to be released. Think about that big thunder and shaking when they heard on that day. They even were amazed. You think that they, they, they were scared. I would be scared at this time. If I hear thunder and this place starts shaking, I don't know, I know, you will know it's the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you that. But no, you will be perplexed, you will be sort of, wow, you know, you learn to channel that. You don't need to walk trembling and shaking over this, you think you're crazy. But the Lord also said, I'll give you the Holy Spirit, i give you the gift of tongues, so that you can use it to edify for it yourself. Don't have to go like crazy out on the street. But in that day, it was uh, so important. The Lord wanted those people to go out and to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know the story. I told you, read the book of Acts and you will get to know it. It's very easy to read. It's actually exciting because you will see who we are as a church. You see the power of God being displayed. 
But I want you to read it, and I want you to ask the Lord to do the same in your life. And let me tell you one thing more. The Lord wants you to be a victim of that power. Let me tell you this. Are you satisfied as a Christian? Are you happy with salvation? You don't have to answer me. Are you thankful for what the Lord is doing in your life? What could you give back to you? What could we really give back? It's the Feast of Weeks, the first fruits. Because if you start giving back, do you know what happens if I empty my pockets? They're all empty, I've got a new one. One thing out of my pocket is a, a hanky and, and this here. I could go there and could grab all the stuff and put it in. So if you empty yourself, what happens? The Lord can fill you up again. If you share what you have, even though we have a food bank, we are giving away. And you know what's happening? Believe it or not, the Lord is sending more to nations. Amen. The mouths of God are different than the world. God's economy is different. He said, if you give according to what you have given, received, I will give you more. See, the Holy Spirit wasn't about us shaking and feeling good and doing this crazy stuff that we see sometimes. The Holy Spirit was about the empowerment for you to do the things that God wants you to do. Yes. And listen, you cannot do it without seeking Him. You cannot do it without rending your heart. Because to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you need to. Uh, 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 maybe you, you're not ready for this, don't do it. But I would encourage you anyway. If you call yourself a Christian, I think it would be pretty boring to be here only on Sunday and on Wednesday. But if you render your heart, it's about seeing the face of God. It's about getting to know Jesus in a deeper way. It's about just, you know, you have a relationship with Jesus himself. The disciples had a one-to-one -one relationship. And God, Jesus himself said, it's much better than I go. Because you will have me inside you. And I will build a church. He said, 13 years. 1300 years before his come, he said 100 years, and he spoke, and this happened 2000 years ago. And listen, those guys were just Galilean fishermen, maybe of a lower stature than you and I. Who likes to catch fish and be smelling like fish every day? None of you, maybe there's a fisher here. I don't know. Who likes the dirty jobs? Well, those guys didn't have a clean job. But they rendered their hearts. They didn't know all. I'm telling you one more example. My brother was preaching uh, last Friday, and I like the example he gave. I said, I might steal it. And it's well written. We know that after they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they went out and preached, and 3,000 were added to the church that day. And then they went further, came to the point that they were walking to the gate. And it was a lame man sitting there for 40 years. And for a good Jew passing by, he would give him a little, uh, a little gift, you know, he would just, like the uh, almonds. Yeah. He, huh? he would give him an almond. And it's a few good thing. Because you're passing by, so now and then you need to drop something in the basket to just make sure that you're a good Jew. In other words, it's not really giving according to what you're being blessed, but we do it anyway, you know? It's not a sacrifice. I don't have this leftover coins in my pocket. And then come John and Peter, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, the empowerment. And this man calls out to them and he said, Look, I have money and gold I have not. But what I have given, what I have given, I will give it to you in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. And this man got up. If you want to read it, you need to read it first. I want to challenge you to read it. But what happens there, they didn't say, I have nothing, so I can't give you not. I don't have money. And often, some of us look at what we don't have. And as a result, we don't give. 
But what the Holy Spirit has done in their hearts is there's a power available. And now I will start giving according to what the Lord has given me. In the name of Jesus, walk. You're healed. I want to dare you to start not looking in your empty left pocket, but look what's in your right pocket. Maybe there's nothing there, but look inside of you. Today we celebrate. You know, as a matter of fact, we are here because of those men. I said it last week also, all those disciples, after Jesus went away, they got to live, they were probably my, younger than me, they were probably in their 30s, 35. Maybe some of them even younger, they were in their 20s. They got to live another 20, maybe 25, 30 years. So they, were, they didn't get older than me, they were younger than me. And they paid with their lives. As a matter of fact, if you read the book of John chapter 16, 15 and 16, the Lord is speaking. You will suffer because they did it to me. Everything they did to me, they will do to you. And then halfway he said, but look, it's necessary that I go because I will send the Holy Spirit to you. And what do we know of the Holy Spirit? He is a counselor. He is a protector, comforter. And name it. Yes. So why do we not avail of that? So praise the Lord. I just want to challenge you this morning. There is a power. The Holy Spirit is already in you, but He wants to release a power that's in there. And don't look on the things that you don't have. But the Lord is giving you something. So give something back according to what He has given to you. And this is going to be a bigger church. Because people will come to those doors. Not because we want a big church. But they will find Christ. Amen. I'm going to pray. I want to just worship things to come up. I want you to close your eyes. and Maybe there's something that you need to render this morning. In your heart. Maybe that's stopping you from a value of what the Holy Spirit has for you. And you need to ask yourself that question. Take a minute just to think about it. As we sing that next song, I want you to just ask the Lord to fill you with that same power that came on the disciples that day.
that you never made a choice for this Jesus that we're talking about, but you know in your heart, you can sense that he is here. You've seen the joy in many of our hearts. It doesn't make any perfect. We are not perfect, but we know who our Redeemer is, and that's why he makes us. When he sees you, when he sees me, he sees Jesus Christ, the one who paid for our sins. I want to pray for you. Maybe you don't have to put up your hand, but if you want to make a decision and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to fill you with that spirit, I want to pray for you. I also want to pray for the ones who never thought about this power that is available, about this power that makes us do things that we cannot do in our own strength, that naturally are not there for us because we are scared of it. I want to pray for you if you want to avail that power. Perhaps it's the gift of tongues. Not to show off, but to edify yourself. Oh, Lord Jesus, I want to just pray for you. If you want to avail that power, I'm not even asking you to put a hand. I can ask you to keep your eyes closed. And I want to pray. I want to pray because in this part of our Christian walk, is the future of a Christian to walk in God's strength. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray for the one in this place, Lord, that never made a choice for you, Lord, and is wondering, Lord Jesus, if this is real, how do I get to know you? You can repeat after this words that I'm going to speak now. So, Lord Jesus, if you want to repeat after maybe everybody wants to repeat with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I've seen what's happening in this place. And, Lord, I know you're real now. I want to ask you, Lord, if this is so, will you come into my heart? Will you forgive my sins? Will you help me to walk according to what you have for me? Lord, fill my heart. Say this, Lord Jesus. You have said it's necessary that I go so that I will send the Holy Spirit. So I say, Holy Spirit, fill my heart. Lord, give me your strength. Give me your power. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters. But this is not another Sunday, Lord, but this probably will be a moment, Lord, that they know, Father, that you are working their hearts. Lord, that they will challenge you on it. You said you will send the Holy Spirit. And I know, Lord, it's for each one of us. As we read, Lord, we know, Father, that we don't have to be ashamed. We know, Father, that we don't have to be afraid. Because you, Father, fill our hearts. Lord, you give us everything we need. Oh, Lord Jesus, go walk in our hearts. Go walk in our hearts. Go walk in our hearts. Hallelujah. Spirit of God.
Would you lift your hand for me? Would you lift your hand? Would you lift your hand?
And I pray, Lord, you've given us the answers, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we will give to them, Lord, that you've given us. I so pray, Lord, that you move our hearts the way you are moved when you see those speak. Of this place today, that we have, we have our conversations. Yes, we will have a fellowship. But Lord, this, let this word sink in today as we go home, that we will dare to go deeper with you, deeper with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I just want to pray God's blessing of you this morning. Thanks for joining our service today. We hope you are encouraged. And here are a few announcements for the week. Hope Church is having our monthly prayer and fasting day this Wednesday, the 2nd of June at the Fun Kids on the Gort Road at 730. Come and join us for a night of prayer. Food Bank is now up and running. If you would like to donate or volunteer, contact Hope Church for details. We have some exciting news. All of you who have finished secondary school, Hope Church is starting a young adults on Friday, the 4th of June. Contact Elton or Lisa for details. Hope Youth has started Alpha Youth. Come and join us and learn why Jesus died for us. If you'd like to give your tithes or offering online, the details are on the screen. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more details. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hope Church Ennis, for more hope from home. Thanks again for joining us and have a great week.